Hi, I'm Charles Randolph Wright. I grew up in York, South Carolina, a small town south of Charlotte, and went to Duke undergraduate, where I was supposed to be a doctor, and decided, no, I have to follow my dream. And my dream was always to tell stories in whatever way that is. And it's, it's ironic that the dream led me to Motown, which is about telling stories and about believing in your dreams. Motown is the ultimate dream. Barry Gordy created this company from nothing, and what he accomplished was amazing. And as a kid, growing up in South Carolina, Barry Gordy was one of the few images I had of people of color with their own companies, people who had this business that was positive and strong. And so, ironically, I, I've been obsessed with him <laughs> all these years, and now to get to work hand in hand with someone you idolize has been spectacular. When I first got the script, it was it had to be 10 hours long. It was so many, it was every song imaginable. And in most musicals, you immediately know what to get rid of because the song doesn't work or it's something that you don't care about. But every song in the show was spectacular. So having to get rid of of songs, it's like telling you know one child you don't like them as much as your other child. It was really difficult picking that. But we did songs that told the story of Motown, and it's Barry Gordy's journey, it's his story. So we use that music to tell it and to find how do you tell about something that create, that was a movement, it wasn't just music, it changed the world, it changed people. And when you think about what this music did at a time when there was no internet, how did it go global long before people knew what that was? So that, and I had to, with him, to discover how do you tell that in a theatrical context. And what's been so amazing is watching every kind of audience member get it and take this journey. Everyone has some reference to Motown. They have something about it that responds to them. And every night I watch audiences when I see the show, I watch them go in. There's a t-shirt at the Motown Museum that says, Live It Again. And that's what people do when they see the show. And then younger audiences who see it, they discover where this all came from, what their parents and grandparents listened to. And they see on stage people their age going after their dreams. And it's ultimately, that's, that's what it's about, pursue your dream. I wanted to give the audience something that gave them that memory. I, I didn't want actors, because I told the actors, don't copy people, don't try and imitate Diana, Stevie, Mike. you can't. So it evoked them. What was it about them that made them unique? What did they have that made them special? Find in you what, what that is. And so what I'm so proud of, and the actors that are performing the show here will blow your minds. I mean, people are stunned by them because they completely inhabit these characters, but they're not imitating them. They, they bring this, this, this magic. And the same thing with how it looks, the costumes. There are 200 wigs in the show. It's, it's that, most of them Dianas. But it, it's, so, it's so much to that era, that time, to acknowledge it, to honor it, because we stand on the shoulders of these incredible artists. And what we wanted in this show was to show that, to say thank you. Thank you for opening the door to people like me to do this, for giving us permission. I always think of that. What is, how do you give someone young permission to follow their dream, to do what they want, to, to be who they want to be. And that's, that's what it is, dream big. I'm here working with Children's Theatre Company on a new play, and we're doing what's called a workshop where we're working on the material and figuring out how to tell this story. And it's the film Aquila and the Bee, translated as a play now. And one of my favorite films. And so when I heard about this, I thought, this is incredible. Peter Brosius from Children's Theatre called me, and I said, oh my God, how can I have to do this play? And I don't have time, but you have to make time for something that you want. And Cheryl West wrote an amazing script of this, and that's what we're working on now. But again, it's such a great story of dreams that geography doesn't limit your dream that the world doesn't stop something that you believe in. This little girl from this community that is, is, is seen as a negative community becomes something and saves that, that town, saves those people. And that's such an important message, especially right now, especially when our country is so separate. It's the thing with Motown as well. I want to do work that tells those stories, that says to the audience, no, you can enjoy this together. 
we, we must come back together. When do we get so separate? And to have this music do that in Motown, to have a story like Aquila do that, which is so powerful and crosses racial lines, crosses the boundaries, it's a spelling bee. Anybody can spell or not. <laughs> and so the idea of doing work like this, and what a great place at Children's Theater which is I've, I've heard about forever as one of the top theaters, if not the top theater in the country, children's theater. But it's not just a children's theater piece. You know, you come in through the eyes of children, but you see it's something for all of us. It's something that we must deal with. It's something, it's how we can save ourselves and change, change the world. Hi, I'm Charles Randolph Wright, director of Motown the Musical, and you're watching BMA Networks.